Happy Mother's Day. Not only to the Cornerstone moms, but to all the moms all across the world. What a special thing it is to be a mother. My mother is no longer here, but I sure appreciated her when she was. I hope that you'll show some of that appreciation for her today. Well, what a blessing it must be to be a mother. The Bible says that children are an heritage from the Lord. Today I'd like to talk to you about a very special mother, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She had the very special privilege and responsibility of giving birth to and rearing the very son of the living God. She had a perfect son. You, not so much. My mom, not so much. But even her life was full of a mixture of joy, sorrow, challenges, and disappointment. When she gave birth, it was a very, very special event. I remember how the Bible said that before Jesus was born, Mary was visited by an angel. In Luke chapter 1, starting at verse number 26, the Bible says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary had a very special kind of birth. She got a, an announcement by an angel the angel Gabriel at that. It was going to be a very special birth because she had never been intimate with a man. It was going to be very special because God had given her favor to have this particular child. Please know this. Moms, you are special in all the earth. That maybe no, not maybe, but you're not giving birth to the very son of the living God, but every birth that has ever been birthed is special. It is unique in the sight of Almighty God. No one else can do what you moms have done. We men cannot do it. We cannot conceive a child and provide them a safe haven until the little bundle, the little bundle of joy can survive on its own. Mothers do that. No one else can give birth. No one else can nurture in quite the same way that mothers nurture. Mothers are uniquely suited for motherhood. That is the way God planned it, 
And we who are not mothers appreciate you for being so special. I would interject just a personal note to my wife. Y'all excuse me while I do. Thank you, sweetheart, for being a terrific mother to our children. What a great job you did. And, and, and now you're being a wonderful grandmother to our grandchildren. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate you for all that you have done. Now listen, when, when Mary heard this announcement from the angel Gabriel, her response was simply this, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. When it comes to being a mother, one ought to want for the Lord's will to be done in conception, in birth and in the rearing of the child. God bless the mothers who are willing to rear their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. It was a special birth that Mary had and moms, whatever birth it is that you have had is special and you are special to us. But understand this, as special as it is, to be a mother, sometimes it is accompanied by sorrow. At the age of 12, Joseph and Mary had gone to Jerusalem because of the Passover. Hear the words from Luke chapter 2, starting at verse number 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I, have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. It grieved his mother when he wasn't where she thought that he was going to be. After all, this was the son of the living God. How is she going to explain this in her own heart? How is she going to explain this to anybody else? I, I lost the son of God. Sometimes things happen in our lives and they cause us great sorrow. But you see, there, there were two things that she did not know. She did not know, first, what had become of her son. She thought that he was in the crowd. I remember one time when I was young, uh, there were seven children in our family, and mom would, would, uh, would get nickels uh, to put into the offering. And, and uh, this one time, everybody left home, and I was home alone. They didn't miss me somehow or another, if you can believe that, until they got to church and mom was handing out the nickels to put into the offering. And she had an extra nickel. She said, one of my children is missing. Caused her great sorrow. Where, where could he be? That's how Mary must have felt. 
She looked around for her son and he wasn't there. And she said to him when she finally found him, uh, uh, your father and I have been looking for you and we've been sorrowing about it. She didn't know where her son was. They searched for him for three days and could not find him. They didn't know where to look. They just looked all over. But it turns out that he was in a place where she never would have thought that he would be and doing what she never would have thought he would be doing. Here he was in the temple and he's talking to the doctors, doctors of the law, perhaps doctors of medicine. And the Bible says that that he, he was hearing their questions and giving them answers and they were absolutely astounded at the things that he knew. I can almost imagine them asking him a medical question about birth, perhaps. The miracle of birth and Jesus giving answers that surely they had maybe thought of but didn't understand exactly the way that he was saying. He was giving answers that perhaps they, they already knew, but no child ought to know them. But you gotta remember something, that Jesus had created the heavens and the earth. Jesus was the one who formed children in their mother's womb. It was Jesus who, by all things, everything that was made, was made by him. Children. Trees, the sky, everything was made by him and by him all things consist. That's how he knew so much. That's how he could outsmart the doctors. Jesus knew because he was the one that made all things. There he was talking to the doctors and they were amazed, astounded. The Bible says at the things that he knew. So she goes and she asks him, what are you doing? Your dad and I have been upset. We've been sorrowing. And his answer astounded her. How is it that you sought me? Didn't you know that I must be about my father's business. You see, it was common for young Jewish boys to take up the family business, the family occupation. Whatever daddy was, that's what they were going to be. And Joseph was a carpenter. One other thing that he was, was that he was not Jesus's natural father. Yes, he reared him up. Yes, he taught him like they taught him the carpentry business. But there was another father, the heavenly father. And Jesus says, you know something? I, I, I understand why you think that I am just a carpenter. But he was more than a carpenter. He was the son of the living God. And he says, you know something? I must answer to my heavenly father. Can I preach on that for just a minute? I have a natural daddy. He's gone to glory now. But while he was here, I lived in his home. I ate his food. He provided for me. And one day he hoped that I would be a success at something or another. But I've got another father, a father who lives in glory. A father who created all that there is. A father to whom I must answer and I must be about his business. No matter what the business of my earthly father was. So she did not know what had become of her son. She also did not know what her son would become. You see, there was times, different times in Jesus' life, 
Times that Mary could never have anticipated what would happen. I remember that there were uh, three years in his earthly ministry. A delightful year, a despised year, and the year that he died. There was a delightful year. It was a year of favor when Jesus was going about and he was doing good, healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding 5,000 people with two little fish and five loaves of bread, preaching, teaching. And for about a year, the first year of his ministry, everybody delighted in the things that he did. Then the second year of his ministry, it was no longer delight. He was despised and decried and denied. It was a year of opposition. People despised him for his teaching because sometimes he taught some things that went against the grain, maybe against the grain of the religious establishment. For they had their way of doing things and Jesus came by and said, yep, you have heard that it was said to do this and to do that, but I said. And Jesus had a different way of looking at things. For instance, sometimes uh, as he said, you have heard that you should, should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He said, no, 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 no. I'm telling you that you should love your enemies. That didn't set too well. Jesus taught that if a man looked upon a woman to lust after her, he's committed adultery with her already in his heart. They had only heard about the specific act of adultery. Jesus said it's a heart thing. That true, true spirituality runs down into the heart. It's not just about what you do. It's about what you think, about how you're motivated, about the love that you have for God in your heart. He was despised for his teaching. He was decried. I remember when he stood before Pilate. Pilate said, I find no fault in him, for there was no fault in him. And he said, you know something? Here's, here's what I want to do. I want to offer you a choice between Jesus and Barabbas. Barabbas, the Bible says, was a murderer. And the people decried to Jesus and said, we don't want Jesus. We want Barabbas. And Pilate said, well, then what shall I do with Jesus? They said, crucify him. He asked them, why? What evil has he done? And they said, doesn't really matter. Crucify him. So he was delightful one year, despised another year, and decried. And in his last year, he was denied, even by his most staunch supporter. There came a time when Peter, Peter who had made the great confession of faith when Jesus had said, who do men say that I am? And, and they, they said, well, some people think that you're Elijah and somebody thinks that you're one of the prophets. Jesus said, who do you say I am? And Peter stood and, and made that bold profession. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. What a confession. What an admission. What truth he spoke. But there came a time when it became uncomfortable to be a disciple of Jesus. They were going to murder Jesus. They were going to have a, a mock trial. Made a mockery of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter couldn't stand the heat. And a little girl came to him and said, you know something? You were with him. Peter said, no, no, I wasn't. And another time she came to him and said, you know something? Your speech, your speech is betraying you. You're one of them. He said, oh, no. 
And she came another time and she said, you know something? You were with him. You're one of his followers. And he said, I don't even know him. He denied that he knew Jesus. He was delightful for a while, despised for a while, and then he was dead. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. They took him out to Mount Calvary and hung him on an old rugged cross. The Bible says that the reason that he went to that cross and he went willingly was for people like you and people like me. Sinners. Sinners who did not believe in him. Sinners who did not live lives that were pleasing in his sight. For the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of that sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why he died. He died for sinners. He died in the place of sinners. He died so that ultimately you and I would not have to die. Oh, we certainly may die a physical death. But know this, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Because he rose, that's evidence that he had conquered death, hell, and the grave. He died for us. And he rose for us. Sometimes there's great sorrow in being a mother. Sometimes things just don't turn out the way that we think that they would. Who would have thought that Jesus would have ever been tried and convicted in a court of law for anything? And his mother was sorrowful. Sorrowful when she did not know where he was. And sorrowful when she saw him hanging on a cross. You and I never quite know what our child will be. But sometimes things will cause sorrow. But my next point would be that no matter how things go, we can be supportive. And Mary was. I remember there was a wedding in Cana and Jesus was there and his mother was there. And when they wanted wine, John chapter two says, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. He changed the water into wine. His mother, I don't know why she knew what Jesus might do. I don't know for sure what she thought that he would do but she had seen something in him and she was going to support that. She, she said, you know, my son's here and they've got a problem here and my son is a problem solver. Could I preach on that for just a moment? When you have problems, please know that Jesus is a problem solver. There are many times when we get ourselves into situations and we have problems. Problems 
that there seems to be no solution to, I recommend to you that you run to the Lord Jesus. There's a song that says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to the Lord in prayer. He's a problem solver. Jesus can fix whatever it is that has gone wrong in your life. Jesus can fix whatever has gone wrong in your children's life. Whatever it is, no matter how large or how small, we can run to Jesus and see what it is that he's going to do. I don't always know what he's going to do. I, I rarely know what he's going to do. I just know that he can do something, whether I'm sick or whether I'm well whether I'm poor or whether I am financially free, Jesus can fix whatever life's situations bring. When death comes, Jesus can fix that. He called Lazarus out of the tomb. You gotta know this, that she ran to Jesus. And the reason she ran to Jesus was because he can do anything that he wants to do. And his mother said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That's my baby boy. Just watch what he can do. I, I'm not sure what he's going to do. But I know he can do something. She was supportive of her son. And at the cross, there she was. Mama weeping, and through tear-stained eyes, she's looking up at the cross, and there's her son dying for the sins of the world. I, I don't know if she had grasped all that. We don't always know what's going on with our children, but we can support them. It may bring tears to our eyes, but we can support them. They had convicted her son of crimes that he had not committed. They had called him everything but a child of God. Now there he hung, bruised and battered. Isaiah 53 says that his visage was marred more than any man. Jesus suffered more than anybody else because Jesus was suffering for all of sinful mankind, suffering for the results of sin in the world, suffering so that all those that God would call unto himself, and there's a myriad of them, he suffered for us. But there was his mama. There she was weeping for him. And sometimes it causes sorrow. But then, what a surprise. What a surprise it was three days later at the resurrection. Who knew? Who knew that Jesus was going to rise from the dead? Who knew that even though mankind had done their worst, Jesus was going to show himself at his best when he conquered death, hell, and the grave. Of course, he had been telling them all along that he was going to rise from the dead. But people pretty much did not believe him. They were all surprised that he actually got up from the grave. I, I remember the disciples had gone and, and hid themselves because their leader, because their master, because their teacher, because their Lord had been crucified. And they were hiding for fear of the Jews. But hadn't he told them that he was going to rise again? I wonder what surprises await you in your child. It won't be nearly as good as rising from the dead. But haven't you already been surprised by the things that you have seen in your precious little darlings? Who knows what they 
will become. They may become teachers, they may become doctors, they may become directors, bakers, athletes, musicians, pastors, or just be the best that they can be at whatever they choose to be in life. You gotta recognize that every birth is special in its own way. And you're the one that God chose to give your children life. Every child will bring sorrow at some point. Please know this, you can do the best for them that can be done. And then there still may be sorrow. It may be sorrow that's brought on by somebody else. It may be sorrow that's brought on by your own child. But each of your children needs support. I'm so glad that we have mothers who support their families. I'm so glad that we have mothers who bring them to the church house so that they might be educated in the word of Almighty God, so that they might learn to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm so glad that we have mothers who are willing to bring up their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord and then watch and be surprised by whatever it is that God calls them to do. May God bless all the mothers on this your special day. It's a different kind of day with all that's going on around us. We're not able to, to meet in our building Please know this, you are loved and you are appreciated. And for all those that are children of mothers, that would be all of us. If you still have your mother, make sure to show some appreciation. Oh, I know we've got social distancing going on right now, but you can still show appreciation, whether it's a card, whether it's a hug on the phone, Get together with them however it is that you can get together. Moms know this. We love you. We appreciate you and all that you are and all that you do. Life is just better because of you. Dear Lord in heaven, I pray for the mothers I pray that we may do the biblical thing and honor our fathers and our mothers. And as moms turn today, Lord, I pray that they may have a sense of, of, of appreciation for being a mother and that we might have a sense of appreciation because they are our mothers. Love them now, bless them, encourage them. I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.